Signalis is a complicated game with deep lore and complex writing. Due to this, there are many different approaches that have been used to solve and kind of understand what it all means. Usually on this channel, I cover an approach that takes everything that occurs as real and gives it all equal priority. This realist approach uses the king in yellow and bioresonance to explain things and finds its evidence from notes and documents. However, there is an alternate approach, and in today's video I'm going to be covering that. This being the dreamer's approach. This mentality of theory is far removed from how I think and make theories, and is far removed from any other theory I've written. So I'm going to do my best to fairly explain and cover their viewpoints and how their methodology works, but I apologize ahead of time if I really fail to do so. So with no more delay, let's just get right into this. <laughs> Let's start off by establishing what dream theory is as a concept. The idea is that the events of Signalis that we see is nothing more than a dream, being held by one or a few dreamers. I'll get back to that detail later. They use this aspect to explain the complex problems of Signalis, like what is nowhere, how do we switch planets, how does the memory sequence work, how does e exist? This methodology has some strengths and is overall the most popular in the Signalis community. The dreamer approach to theory has practically consumed all theory in places like r sig with many even wagering that it is the definitive answer to the game, which I would have some issues with, but the popularity of this method and the strength of it certainly plays in part due to its simplicity. For it is far easier to just chalk things up to being a dream than go into the murky waters of theory to try and reconcile all the pieces of lore with each other. I mean, if you're a follower of the channel, you'd likely have seen how it took me almost three months to make any headway in understanding the lore of the game using a realistic approach. Meanwhile, dreamers had the game understood to their own opinions within days of the game coming out. This advantage certainly granted them more accessibility to their theory and more comfort in expanding on it. And on top of that, by having the comfort and accessibility, they've been able to go deeper into lots of concepts realists haven't been able to touch. But let's get into the exacts of some of the dreamers' approaches. Starting off, we have the simple theory, which once held the most popularity, this being that the only dreamer is Arianne, and the whole game is simply fragments created by her mind as she drifts on the Penrose to a certain death. While certainly bleak and nihilistic as one would expect from the game, this response allowed for quick and easy answers to what is everything, it all just being representations of the various parts of her psyche, the bleak military halls of S23 are that way because Arion thinks they would be that way, the Adler is incompetent because she views him as such, Elster is the protagonist because to Arion that has always been the case. However, there are some issues with this theory. Be it how it oversimplifies various characters, or reduces the purpose of characters such as Star and Yule to simply be thoughts and projections of Ariane and what she wishes, rather than their own independent, truly tragic story on their own, is a large problem for me. It gets farther when we consider that you must boil down how logical rejection of evidence works. To reject evidence, you cannot cherry pick, rather, you must reject fully. What that means is, if we state everything within the game is occurring in Arion's mind, then Arion must have known everything. If that is not true, then it is just a prediction of what it would be. I already mentioned this with S23, but if we hold this theory, then S23 isn't actually like this, rather it's just what she thinks it would like. This would be okay on the surface, but the scale of the rejection does seem to increase rather quickly, as things like Nyanez, which she would have never seen before, have their true appearance questioned. The truth of what's in the classified Elster file no longer says don't form attachments, rather it only says that because Ari thinks that's what it would say. Or on a deeper level, really, ideas like the presence of a spy just being Arion's imagination, Issa having guilt over the bullying being Arion thinking she would be guilty, or, and perhaps worse, even Elster loving Arion really could just be a figment of Arion's imagination, but that's a little too bleak. If these vast story reclassifications and character disminishments don't bother you, then that's fair, honestly. But for me, the sheer scale of what must fall into rejection is too much for this theory. Though it seems the dreamer approach community agrees to a degree, and thus have the next tier of this theory. 
Falk is also a dreamer. This quickly draws a black sharpie through a lot of the past issues with reductions in regards to S23, and fixes them by making us have some insurance that at least part of the game holds some level of truth. By adding a dreamer and stating Falk and Ariana dreaming telepathically across space though, we raise the question of why. The simple answer would be to return to the realist approach and just say it's the gates or the king, but at that point the issue becomes why not just follow it fully. However, I am letting my bias take over here. I am trying to hold on to the dreamer theory. So let's give this theory the respect it deserves. By adding folk, many things return meaning, and the concepts of people blending is due to this dreamer state they find themselves in. This is also supported by the parallels these two have across the game, supporting that they should both be the dreamers. It also allows for a nice middle ground where realist theory and dream can meet, and is frankly the best compromise solution for someone who isn't really convinced by either side. So this theory holds some really solid merit, thus why it seems to be one of the more popular on the subreddit at the moment, and I certainly can understand where people who hold this theory come from. Going from here, we can try and add more levels of truth to the game by adding more dreamers. And the best person we can choose to do this is Isa. Our rifle shooting chimera slaying friend could easily be the third dreamer. This addition helps add even more levels of truth to the rot front side of the game, and overall just balances out the dream theory's responses that make Arion's imagination questionable at times, either in questionable in her character aspect or questionable in like design aspects. It offers no real logical fallacies, however, to make Issa a dreamer, it requires accepting the ritual that actually occurred, which I for one support that it actually occurred, but I know some others really refuse to address that, and that's something. Um, I, I will have to add here, the dream approach theoretically could add unlimited number of dreamers, there's really no arbitrary limit. The theories could just continuously add dreamers. There's there's nothing, no logical reason why one person could be a dreamer and one other person couldn't be. But as you add more dreamers, you're going to be getting closer and closer to a realist approach. Overall, the dream approach is just one another way to find meaning in the game. And while it is a method I personally do not hold a liking to or real affinity for, I can fully understand why people support it, and I give respect to the theorists who work hard to craft deeper theories using this approach, because I know that theory writing ain't easy, and it requires a lot of work. Regardless which approach you follow or believe in, I hope you enjoy this video. If you like my videos, feel free to subscribe, it helps the channel out. And if you'd like to talk to me or any other Signalist fan about the game, theories, lore, or even mods, I have a link to my Discord VSL below in the description. This has been Christopher Beast, and I'll see you all, well, next time.